Welcome to Mono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be focusing completely on canvases. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at what is a canvas, we'll look at the hierarchy structure, and we'll be looking at linking media and other settings in the wallet. Let's jump in. So this is an example of canvases in a world. Uh, this one is created by Triple Dreamers and has a good example of a gallery space. Now each of these are loaded dynamically when you enter the space. So if you use the UI, you can see in the bottom right there, the name of the piece and the artist, and then you can click and it will load. And then if you click on the view this artifact button on the bottom right there, it will go to the website you define. Uh, currently the supported media files types are JPEG and PNG. We will be adding more in the future, such as video. The owner of the space can update this information after the spin's space has been minted. So let's look at adding this to your own spaces. So here is an example of a canvas prefab. We won't be using these today, the artifacts, so let's get rid of those so we can focus it entirely on that. Once again, you do need one portal, so I am going to leave that, uh, but get rid of the second one as well. It is recommended to have about 100 canvases in a space at most, as it will have to load every image at once before the space is loaded, uh, which can certainly add to the load time. Now, the next thing, uh, let's look at the hierarchy of a canvas. Now, this is actually very, very important. If this is not set correctly, you will fail QA and you will have to fix it regardless. So you might as well get it correct on the first point. If you look at the artifacts scene, for example, here, uh, just a, a quick reminder that you cannot rename or delete the artifact scene. It needs to be there. Uh, this object here, the artifacts game object, also needs to be there. So this has artifact layer on it. If you delete it, there will be problems. So make sure that if you collapse uh, everything in the artifacts, that this is here. You could actually have nothing in this game object, and that's fine. But even so, you still need the artifacts game object with the artifact layer tag. No other objects in, in this scene should have the artifact layer tag. Uh, basically, this is the only one that can have that. The canvas prefab which can be found in Mona Assets, Canvas Prefab. So put that in the base. If you delete and want to add canvases again, you can use these Mona Assets to do so. So I'm going to delete that. The Canvas Prefab itself. Um, if you drag and drop a Canvas Prefab, I recommend using Prefab Unpack as this will allow you to edit the files or objects underneath it much easier without any conflicting errors. Another common issue that comes up is that each canvas is not its own unique canvas. So you might have a bunch of objects in one prefab. Uh, this is an example of the, the conflict. Uh, so that's why I usually unpack uh, an object. So let's unpack this one and unpack this one so that won't come up again so say you would have these objects in another canvas which is not what you want uh basically because each canvas prefab or each canvas should it have its own group so make sure that each canvas has the the following hierarchy so the canvas prefab object does not have a tag this should be untagged um, you can rename this object if you wanted to, though. So, cool canvas. Um, and, of course, I'm going to put a one to make it uh, pretty obvious which one's which. This one, however, is the key object in a canvas. It must have a canvas tag and a unique name. So the hint is there, unique canvas name one. So if you were going to make a second canvas, you could make that two, you could make it three, you could make it cool canvas near door. You could name it whatever you want, as long as every single object of this category that has the canvas tag is a unique name object. 
most people are using uh, just Canvas 1, Canvas 2, Canvas 3, but this is completely up to you. As noted, this object must have a Canvas tag. Canvases also must have a mesh collider. Other colliders do not work and will throw an error. Now the spawn point is used for future functionality, uh, not necessarily used at this point in time, uh, but I would set it regardless because you might need it. The spawn point object also requires a spawn point tag. Now this one does not have the avatar gizmo, so if you want to see the direction of it, turn pivot and local on, blue is forward, green is up. I recommend taking it up uh, from the ground a little bit, like uh, maybe a foot or two, just to make sure that we don't have any issues there. The frame assets are, as noted, the frame assets that could be a frame around your canvas. So under frame assets, you'll have design me or remove me, which is basically delete that. I've made uh, a frame, a quick frame in Blender, for example. So I'm gonna show that. So we have this frame. Now, note that anything under the frame assets does not scale with the auto scale functionality. So if this was uh, taking the canvas down to the image, you would basically have uh, a sort of uh, a gap between those two points and that would be full, of course, um, or, or this way, for example, if it was a, a portrait. Uh, that said, um, if you had the setting to the scale to the, the canvas, uh, that would crop at the top and the bottom, so it would still be a square. So there are ways to make sure that your image always fits a frame, um, but at the moment, the frame does not scale, so keep that in mind. If you add a, a collider to your frame, there is a reasonable chance that your canvas will not be seen uh, by the avatar when it works in the playground. So if I look at this object, it won't see the canvas because the collider is blocking the mesh collider on this object. So uh, either make sure that your colliders are actually on the frame perhaps. So I could uh, copy component, paste component as new, uh, and then do that um, and create the frame that way and of course uh, duplicate that or just not have one so make sure that there are no colliders in front of the canvas uh, be it in the frame assets or elsewhere in the space if you're not going to add any of the frame assets you can delete them if you wanted to and just rely on this object here note this mesh renderer is what the canvas positioning is. Now this is what you scale. So if you want a larger object, use this as the scale. Do not scale the base canvas prefab. Make sure to scale this. So as you can see, there's a lot of the information that we've covered on this texture here. So if you need a reminder, you can read all of this. Now the auto scale is set uh, in the wallet. So the frame will scale down uh, to the size of the linked media. So for example, if you have a landscape object, the frame will go up or and down if it is a landscape. If it is portrait, it will go left and right in. So these bounds, the maximum size of your canvas, and that will adjust accordingly. The other option is being cropped to the canvas so the top and bottom will be cropped if it's a portrait and the left and the right will be cropped if it's a landscape. And of course the frame assets, the optional objects that your canvas is placed on or in, these do not scale to the size of the image. That's the hierarchy of a canvas. So I'm going to delete that. I'm gonna put two back in there. Once again, this is wrong. You wanna put it under the artifacts object. Duplicate that. Uh, unique name, we're going to do this unique name too. I'm going to actually name this cool canvas. Uh, note that it is using Pascal case, so uh, capital letters at the start of each word. Actually, I'm going to use control to snap so they are aligned correctly. 
Notice that sometimes when you click it, it might go under the object, not on the prefab object. So make sure you have the correct object selected. Uh, for argument's sake, I'm going to scale this one, 0.15. Two, point two, smaller. And let's do another example. So for this one, we're going to do a crop to the mesh. This one was going to do a landscape, and this one we're going to do a portrait. I'm going to do a QA. Canvas has the same name as another canvas. So that problem, cool canvas, cool canvas. So let's get rid of that one. One, no, let's call that two, one. So uh, let's upload this to our wallets and assign the things we need. Okay, so I've made a, a quick space uh, with bad spelling, our playground files here. Let's drag them here. Uh, no artifacts, which is good. Portals one, good. And canvas is found three, excellent. So upload that. So we have our names. So these are the names that I did do. So this is where naming does come in handy. So if you had just unique like canvas name, canvas one, canvas two, canvas three, you don't know where they are. So you possibly could do canvas one underscore and the location, but completely up to you, of course. Um, so let's have a look at some examples. So if I recall, this one was going to be crop. So that one was unique canvas name. Cool. Unique canvas name. So link. Now, this might be, if it's an NFT, uh, you could link it to OpenSea or another place, other. Uh, I, uh, let's just put it to smona.gallery. Now notice the external URL is not valid, so that's because you need to do HTTP colon slash slash mona.gallery. Now, canvas type, at the moment we have image, more will be late added later. As noted, JPEG and PNG is what we have. Uh, I have some examples of URLs here. So I'm going to do that. And we want to fit the image inside Canvas. So this is the one that was similar to the cropping before. So we have our portrait in here. Let's do that again. So this was the portrait. So let's do first one. I'm not going to put a link this time. That is the portrait, so that should be the same one. And we want to scale canvas down to image size. Link. Good. And last one. Don't want that. We want the image. We need my other image, which is a landscape. And then scale canvas down to image size. Good. Okay, so portrait, portrait, and landscape. Uh, so with those done, we can preview. Okay, so as you can see, we have the portrait image on the left, and that's being cropped at the top and the bottom because it is a portrait, and the width is set to the image. Uh, the next we have the portrait image. As you can see, the canvas has been scaled from the left to the right down to the smaller one, and the bounds are set to the height of the image. And the landscape on the right there has been sort of shrunk um, or reduced from the top and the bottom to match the, the width um, and shrunk to the top and the bottom. So that's basically it for canvases. Uh, hopefully that helps and clears things up. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching and happy building.